Today we've come down to the lovely South End Farm Fishery in Essex, just off the M25. And on recent form, this has been the mecca of silverfish fishing. Some incredible mate, uh, weights on the matches recently. There's a fish sour final coming up on the venue soon as well. So there's been lots of attention coming to the lake. So we thought we'd bring you down, have a look and get some of the action ourselves. Uh, like the match, the, I think there was a match yesterday or the day before, and it was one with 120 pound of skimmers. Uh, and like the backup weights were ridiculous, down to I think like last place in the match at 50 to 60 pound themselves, which just goes to show how many fish are in the lake. Um, we've sat on peg six today, which is over the far side as you drive in. There's a little um, ma match on the front bank, so we've just sort of come and sat out the way of them guys. Um, yeah, we've had a decent start. We've caught some big skimmers already. Just looking at the weights and speaking to a few people that have been fishing the matches, Look, pellets has been the main bait that I'm sort of gathering has been doing all the damage. And the trouble is with this lake, it's so deep. Like it, today we're fishing short, so we're fishing like a top five. And it's like, I'd say eight, nine foot deep there. So there's no real need to fish long. I mean, in the match, I'm sure when there's a bit more pressure on it, you'll have to have a long line set up. But um, at the minute, I think all the damage has been done on this short line, seem to catch them better fish. Like again, talking to the guys that have been coming, baits that they've been fishing, pellets just seems to be the one. So um, we've just knocked up today, kept it nice and simple. I've got a bag of mainline match. Oh, missed the bite then. We've got a bag of mainline match two mil cell pellets. I've soaked them for like three minutes and then let them air off. And they go like a lovely, nice, sticky texture then. You can feed them loose, you can feed them in a ball. We've messed about of it a little bit today. I think the biggest thing with this sort of fishing is just mess about with how you're feeding it. As you can see, I've got a cad pot on at the minute. At the start, when we kicked off, we was just like feeding little balls of micros through a bigger pot and um, sort of fishing it out for two or three fish, topping it up a little bit. And then as it got better and better, we've put a kinder pot on, so we're feeding a lot more regular try hold fish in your peg a lot uh, for a lot longer also you can try it it's like today it's not been really right for it because it's been quite blowy today but if it's not because we've not got loads of tow just feeding some loose micros although it's deep you can still get away with feeding loose micros just that little bit of extra attraction i think like that's why i think micros are so good there's so many so many more things you can do with them and then literally just on the hook, all we've got is a four mil expander. Mainline match, natural four mil expander. Absolutely perfect for it. The only other bait I have brought with me today is I know from previous experience and people on this lake, corn can be quite a good bait. So we've been now and again, just cupping in a few grains of corn. Let's have a little bite there, miss. Yeah, a few grains of corn just to change of bait every now and again we've just put a bit of corn on it's not been as good as pellets caught an odd fish on it but not as many um so yeah we've just been just chopping and changing like that mixing it up with the feed like again like a couple of times when we was feeding with a kinder pot earlier it went a little bit funny drew a few too many small fish in so we went back to just literally feeding a slightly bigger ball not massive and then just sort of fishing it out and been a bit more patient and then when you got a bite it was a slightly better fish you can really see when you can get on some of them bigger skimmers you can see why they're catching such big weights at the minute like i say it's about eight or nine foot here today here we go that's it that's one of them big ones see that time there i missed a bite and i never went back in with another uh, little ball just felt like if i'd fed again might have missed out on that but you can see why when you're catching these fish it don't take long to build a weight of them. I mean, that's a small one really for today, but you're still talking sort of 14 ounce getting on for a pound. But yeah, going on to the rig, we're just literally fishing one of the uh, Bobby style floats in a wire stem. I've got them set up in carbon as well, but with the wind the way it is today and we're fishing pellets, little balls of pellets, I felt a wire would be better. We've got a 0.75. 
and then main line <coughs> where it's like like I say it's no you don't really need to worry about going too light on a main line I've set up an 017 n gauge perfect for it it's a nice robust strong line and um, it's never going to let you down you because especially if you're in and out and catching plenty of fish and then that goes down to an 010 of the new supernatural and that's brilliant that new the new hook length material well it's not just for hook lengths i use it for um, main line a lot now as well i've been trying it out just seems a lovely line it knots really well as well and that goes down to a 16 f1 pellet and that's just perfect for this style of fishing and shotting wise it's literally we've got a little bulk about 50 centimeters from the hook and then there's probably about six shots tapered out from the bulk down to the hook length and uh, that just creates a lovely curve when you're flicking your rig in. And that's been working out lovely, to be fair. The only other thing I think, although we're fishing short today, you fish a little bit of a shorter line, I've still left the line about 18 inches long. It's just like where you're feeding your pellets, it's nice, a good little tip, is just to flick your rig beyond your feed. We've caught quite a lot of fish today, just flicking that 18 inches beyond and catching a few like that. And another little good little tip is where I'm fishing on this, although I'm on a top five, I've got a little safe section on, and that's ideal, because you can feed your bait back on your elbow, on your joint, and you've always, if you want to fish past your bait, you've always got that little bit extra there. You can go that extra sort of foot past, and where them big wary fish are just sitting off where you're feeding most of your bait, you can catch a few of them there. Let's see if we can catch another one now. But yeah, the good thing is just chopping and changing a little bit because it will, they, it's, it's a car, because it's a commercial venue, there is a lot of carp in here as well. So there will be times when it goes a little bit iffy if you get, we've hooked one carp today where they move into the swim and then they'll just like unsettle the other fish. It might take them a little bit longer to regroup. So it's always worth just chopping and changing, messing about of how you're feeding, whereabouts you lay your rig, how you're laying your rig in. And like I say, having that hook bait choice is always a good little thing as well because you could put a bit of corn on, have three or four real quick fish, and when they're sort of anything from a pound to three pound, yeah, that's a massive difference. Let's give it another little nugget. I'll check that hook bait. Yep, that's all good. And again, all we're doing, literally, when we're kinder potting, it's just making a little nugget like that. And I'll squeeze it nice and nice so it goes down to the bottom. And then just literally drop that in, flick your rig in, and pull your rig back on top of where you fed it. Again, like now, just flick past, and just let the rig just settle then. And when that rig cocks, you're probably gonna be about a foot and a half past where that longer, slightly longer lash. You're gonna be about a foot and a half past your bait now where you're fed and any of them slightly better fish that are coming in from out there they're going to pick up your hook bait first ideally there we go just makes a difference straight away slightly smaller fish this one it's a little skimmer but still as long as you're putting fish in your net in amongst them slightly better fish See, now I feel like feed again. Just try and regulate your feeding. Sometimes feeding, you can start getting line as if you're feeding every chuck. Sometimes it's really good. You just got to play about with it. And just see, it'll always change throughout the day as well. You know, like it's, what's good at one stage might not be good all day long. You have to be really adaptive to change. Let's lay that in again. Feed another little nugget. See, it might mean like later on again, going back to feeding slightly more bait in one hit and then fishing it out for two or three fish. <clears throat> it's just worth chopping and changing. But I mean, this, I mean, this venue is just unbelievable. When you look at how many, I mean, in the summertime, 250 pound weights of skimmers come off of this lake. <clears throat> it's just absolutely stuff of them. So you can see why, why it's been fishing so well. 
and you, the good beauty of it is you don't need to go far out. But I think the chap who won the match the other day has literally just fished the top kit and won in front of him. And like caught 120 pound of skimmers. I mean, you're not going to compete with that if you're fishing long, so you really need to make sure you're on the right line. Obviously, they're not going to be in every peg like that. And just be patient and wait for a nice clean bite. Every now and again as well, if you feel like you've sat there for a while, just a little lift and drop. But where it's so deep, instead of like lifting your rig about sort of six inches out of the water, just try and lift it up like a couple of foot and then let it come back in. Almost like you've just like fed a bit of bait, it's just come in. Sometimes that can entice a bite. When you're hooking your expander as well, just get a nice sort of uniform one, no, no air in it, it looks like it's not going to break down and then just literally roll it on the barrel, roll it onto your hook like that. Perfect. <clears throat> Another little nugget of micros. Lay your rig past, back there, feed your little ball, and then lift your rig onto it. There we go, straight away. And then you can sort of tell when you're fishing like that, when you feed your ball and you lay your rig onto it, if you get a bite on your feed, you know, that's, you know when you, you, you know, that's been the right way to do it. But sometimes, if you don't sort of get a bite like that, that's when you want to be flicking it past. Off the back of your feed and catching a few like that. I'm not going to feed again now because we caught that one straight away. Let's just see if we can catch another one off that same little ball. It, lay your rig past. Just try and get your rig always coming in nice and straight so that when any bite or any fish comes and you get an indication on that pellet, you read it on your float. There we go, look at that straight away. That's a slightly better fish again. See, if we fed again straight away then, we might not have caught that fish. Another nice skimmer. So many fish in this lake, it's ridiculous. Great fishing. Certainly don't take long to build a weight of them when you're catching plenty of them. 